As you might have noticed, we've made a whole bunch of videos explaining the party's manifesto pledges. They're all linked down below. But that's a whole lot of content. So we're going through the process of making videos comparing the parties on issues that are important to you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the party's different Brexit policies, as listed in their manifestos, in order of Brexitness. For simplicity's sake, we're only going to consider the Conservatives, Labour, Lib Dems, the SNP, Plaid Cymru, the Greens and the Brexit Party. Before we do that though, we're running a competition on our Instagram. We've posted all five main party manifestos on our story, and we want you to share the story or stories that most accurately reflect your views. We'll then randomly select one person who shares the story and send them a complete Season 1 pin badge set and an out-of-stock Golden UK pin. Entries close in 24 hours when the stories come down from our Instagram, and there's a link to that down below. The most Brexity Brexit policy unsurprisingly comes from Nigel Farage's Brexit party, who are in favour of a clean break Brexit, or what's more commonly known as a no deal Brexit. This essentially means ditching the withdrawal agreement and leaving the EU on WTO terms. According to the Brexit party, this is the only way to guarantee a substantial exit from the EU. The withdrawal agreement as it stands keeps the UK in the EU's regulatory zone, and during the transition period it keeps the UK under the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. However, remember that the Brexit party agreed not to fight the Conservatives in their incumbent seats this election. By doing so, the party have sort of tacitly admitted that while it's not their preferred option, Johnson's deal just about counts as an acceptable Brexit to them. Which leads nicely onto the second most Brexity Brexit policy, which comes from the Conservatives, who want to leave before January 31st under Johnson's aforementioned withdrawal agreement. According to Johnson, the withdrawal agreement means that the UK will technically have left the EU by January, and he says that he doesn't plan on extending the transition period beyond the current deadline of December 2020. That means that under the Conservatives' plans, the UK will have properly left the EU's orbit with some sort of Canada-style free trade deal by December at the latest. Although many do argue that this timetable just isn't feasible. The third most Brexity Brexit policy comes from Labour, who want to extend Article 50 for six months. They then use this time to renegotiate a withdrawal agreement, presumably to include a customs union and closer alignment with the EU. Then, once they'd sorted out a deal, they'd hold a second referendum. The second referendum would allow voters to choose between remaining in the EU and leaving with the new Labour deal. Corbyn has said that he'd be neutral in the second referendum campaign, but most Labour MPs and politicians like John McDonnell would likely campaign to remain. The SNP, Plaid Cymru and Greens have a similarly Brexity Brexit policy, and this is to go straight for a second referendum, in which they would all campaign to remain. In her Andrew Neil interview, the SNP's leader, Nicola Sturgeon, actually seems to suggest that the SNP would support a second referendum bill even if Labour didn't guarantee them a second Scottish referendum in return. All of these parties also support revoking Article 50 against a no-deal Brexit. This just leaves the Lib Dems, who have the least Brexity Brexit policy of all of the parties. The Lib Dems and Joe Swinson have notoriously committed to straight up revoking Article 50 if they win a majority. This is a pretty interesting policy, because baked into it is an implicit claim that a general election victory trumps the referendum result in democracy points. Even though you can win a general election with way less than 50% of the vote, in retrospect, this policy might not have been the best move for the Lib Dems, as it seems to have hurt their poll ratings, and let's be honest, no one thought that the Lib Dems were going to get the majority to enact the plan anyway. It's also opened up space for Labour to become the second referendum party, which they duly did and it might explain why Labour seems to be squeezing the Lib Dem vote according to the polls. It's possible that the Lib Dems originally intended it as a negotiating stance for coalition talks. They could then demand a second referendum from Labour and claim that they compromised from their original position. Anyway, whatever the thinking behind it, according to their manifesto, the Lib Dems policy is to revoke Article 50 if they win a majority, which, sorry Lib Dems, it's pretty safe to say won't happen which means they'll probably have to settle for supporting a second referendum. Where on this spectrum of Brexitiness do you fall? Which party best reflects your views? Comment down below to let us know. If you want to be updated when we release more manifesto comparisons and election coverage, please subscribe to the channel. You can also hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we release a video. And you can find more from us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And finally, if you want your name featured at the end of the videos, just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.